Hi, I'm Professor Mark Rabowski. The most important asset journals have is their reputation. That's why it's vitally important to behave ethically. Throughout the course, we will be discussing what it means to be a responsible journalist. But for now, I want to briefly touch on three major sins to avoid. Committing these offenses can cause you to get fired if you're a professional journalist. And in this course, committing any of these offenses may result in you receiving an F for an assignment or even flunking the entire course. So pay attention. Ignorance is not an acceptable defense. I'm not trying to frighten you either. Rather, you need to remember that the press has a lot of power and sometimes power can cause corruption. In this lesson, I'm going to address three trouble areas. Plagiarism, fabrication, and conflicts of interest. Keep listening because I'm going to discuss certain situations that you probably don't even realize are considered plagiarism, fabrication, or a conflict of interest. I'll also discuss some things students have done in the past that's gotten them in trouble, so you know to avoid them. First, plagiarism. Don't plagiarize. Plagiarism occurs when you attempt to pass off words or ideas of others as your own without giving them credit. Here's an example. You're researching someone for a profile story, and you discover that a press release has already been written about the person, so you borrow entire sentences without giving credit. Even if you slightly reword the sentences, it's still considered plagiarism unless you attribute the information to the source, and you will likely be caught. Remember, once online, your story will be as searchable via Google as the text you plagiarized from. Unfortunately, this uh, happened to uh, one of my previous students. Um, he had been struggling in the class and he submitted an article that uh, just seemed like something he didn't write. So I just copied and pasted a, a sentence from his story uh, into Google and voila, um, a press release popped up, uh, which of course, you know, he did not mention or give credit to in his story. And he essentially plagiarized the entire press release just changing a couple words here and there. So needless to say, he got an F for that story. Second, let's discuss fabrication. Don't fabricate information. Fabrication occurs when you make up, imagine, or exaggerate any facts, quotes, sources, or events for a story. Maybe you lost your notes for a story, so you try reconstructing them from memory that's potentially fabrication. Or maybe you need a ju juicy quote so you concoct a bogus news source with a likely sounding name. That's fabrication. Or maybe you're interviewing a student and he says, oh, just make up a quote for me that makes me sound smart. You can't do it. It's fabrication. Uh, I had a student who wrote a story about an athlete who got in trouble for throwing a big party where minors were served alcohol. The athlete said the dean had decided to make him um, do community service as his punishment. So the student journalist uh, quoted the dean as saying that he decided to make the athlete do community service as his punishment. The problem was the journalist never spoke with the dean. He just assumed the athlete was telling the truth turns out the dean never said that and the journalist got in trouble for fabrication everything you write must be provably true no matter how inconvenient that is if for example john says mary uh, said she hates her professor you can't quote mary as saying she hates her professor unless you actually talk to mary and confirm she made that statement it doesn't matter if john is your best friend or even your brother and you know he'd never lie to you. Writing a statement as truth without knowing for certain whether or not it actually is true is considered fabrication. And remember, plagiarism and fabrication aren't just wrong in journalism, they are also violations of the college's academic honesty code. Finally, Let's talk about conflicts of interest. You need to avoid conflicts of interest. This means not writing stories about or interviewing friends, significant others, and family members. 
it's impossible to be objective when you do this. Uh, they will likely expect you to slant the story in a positive way, in a way that makes them look good, which may result in biased or inaccurate reporting. Uh, on the other hand, if you uh, do resist sort of pressures or expectations from them to slant it in their favor, uh, and you do write a completely honest article about them, uh, they may get offended. Uh, and that could strain your friendship or relationship uh, with the person. So it's a no-win situation for you as a journalist. Um, here's an example. I had a student who wrote an opinion column that was critical of a reality TV show. Uh, she was upset because the show was being filmed in her neighborhood and she didn't think it accurately portrayed uh, residents in her community. Um, so she wrote an op-ed about this and part of the assignment included submitting the op-ed to a newspaper. Well, when it came time to submit the op-ed to the newspaper, she refused to. Uh, it turned out that her friend's mother was one of the stars of the show and she was afraid that uh, her friend would read her op-ed and get angry at her. So she had placed herself in an impossible situation. Either she could not publish the piece, in which case she wasn't doing her job as a journalist to report the news and she wasn't fulfilling the requirements of this assignment, or she could publish it and strain her fr friendship. Either way, the result would be unsatisfactory. Now, she could have, of course, avoided the situation in the first place by writing about uh, someone else and something else that uh, she wasn't so closely uh, connected with. So let that serve as a lesson to you. In addition, uh, you know, the ethical problems aside, you should also avoid writing about people you're used to because you probably won't write a very good story since you do know them so well. When young journalists write about things or people they are intimately familiar with, they tend to take lots of information uh, about that person or thing for granted, um, or their article assumes things that the average reader doesn't know about the person or thing. As a result, the article is often confusing to the average reader. It's missing important information. Now, you may be thinking, well, if I can't write about people I know, who am I supposed to write about? Well, that's the challenge of journalism. You need to go out of your comfort zone, uh, go outside of your own little world, and, and talk to strangers. Journalists do it every day, and you can do it too. To reiterate, this is just a crash course in ethics. There are other things that can cause problems. Uh, I suggest taking a look at the ethics chapter in your textbook, and of course, if you have any questions, concerns, or doubts, talk with me. Um, you know, I'm not out to get you or to, to, to see you fail. Um, I just want you to be a responsible journalist. And that means avoiding plagiarism, avoiding fabrication, and avoiding conflicts of interest for starters. So once again, if you have uh, an ethical concern, Please don't hesitate to email me at mark.grabowski at maris.edu. That's mark.grabowski at maris.edu.